Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Welcome to Training for Raining. And it's a good night to die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you. You know, God's presence is wonderful. We can't live without it. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. Turn to the book of Ezekiel 36, please. Thank you, Lord. Ezek 36. In verse 22. 36, 22. Hike. <laughs> Go long. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Ezekiel. Oh, I'm in Exodus. No wonder why it doesn't look funny. <laughs> Sheesh. Somebody, I think Ezekiel moved on me. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. 22, let's say it. Ezekiel 36, 22. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you what? Wherever you went. So you're saying, listen, I'm doing this because you guys have been profaning. You messed up my name big time. Amen. You have been living a life that has profaned my name. Verse 23, he said, I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am what? Hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, when all of a sudden they see a change of heart, and he's reverenced, he's honored, respect, he's feared. Amen. He said, this is what I'm going to do. And he's going to explain how he's going to do. He says, for I will take you from all among the nations. I will gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. How many of y'all know that God brought us into this land? Amen. For just a time and season now. He says, then I'm, what am I going to do? I'm going to sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. And I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your idols. Now, this filthiness, amen, is an area of sin. These idols are emotional idols. Verse 26, and I will give you a what? A new heart. After I do what? Cleanse you from all of these impurities, I'm going to give you a new heart, and I'm going to put a new spirit within you. And I'm going to take the heart of stone, which is rebellion, out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you, I'm going to empower you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and you will do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Now, this is very powerful because he says he is the Lord of all creation. When he's reverenced, honored, and respected, and feared in us before men, then the world will see it. They will see a change. They will see the power of God. So he says first he's going to cleanse us from filthy, all filthy contaminations of idols. Idols are desires. 
Everybody get it? Idols are what? Desires. These are desires of worship. Idols are desires of worship, things that you worship. See, people don't even know they worship them. You may worship yourself. Again, he's going to cleanse us from all filthy contaminations of idols, desires of worship. He's going to replace the central core of all of your desires. The central core of your desires is your heart. It is the core, the central core of your desires. He says, I'm going to replace your old ones with a new one. Does everybody get it? And then he's going to put a new spirit that will reflect the character of the desire. And his spirit will empower us to reject desires of offense to God. And create a new desire that pleases him. And to we are transformed into his character. And I'll repeat this, so don't give me funny faces, okay? You'll be okay. <laughs> okay, what's he going to do? He's going to cleanse us from idols of worship. He's going to replace our heart, which is the core of all desires. Your heart is the core of desire. And we'll explain a little bit more of this. And then he's going to give us a new spirit that will reflect the character of the desire. See, your heart is the character of your spirit. Amen? And how do you so tell somebody's character, really, by what their desires are? Amen? Amen? What's their Because we have a life of desire. You and I were born with a desire. We were born with a desire in our heart to desire love. Amen? We desire love. Even though most of the time we never even knew really what love was. That's all we knew was lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Until Christ came, then we realized that love was not a living in an area of a feeling, love was a choice that became peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. But your heart desires love. And what is the greatest love? God Almighty. So you are created with a heart that desires God. Amen? That's how you were created. And you were given a spirit Amen? So your spirit now reflects, your heart will now reflect the, the, your spirit. It is the character of your spirit. And he says he's going to empower us with his spirit so that we can reject the desires of offense to God and create new desires that are pleasing to him until we are transformed into his character and awake in his likeness. This is a spiritual heart. This is not a physical heart. Everybody has a tendency to look at their physical heart when they hear about the heart. It isn't the physical heart. Now, there is a physical heart, amen, and pumps blood. It's, it's a muscle that... Anyways. But your spiritual heart is the core of desire. In John chapter 1. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. In verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the what? Light of 
men. What is the light of men? It is your heart. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. So you and I were created with a desire to not only receive God as love, but give love. It says that he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of the will of God. Again, the light to every man coming in the world is his heart, it is in the spirit of man. He's born again, you get a new heart, you get a new spirit, and the mentor comes, the Holy Spirit. What's he doing? He wants to align your spiritual heart, mind, and conscience. With what? With the heart and mind and character of Christ. So we find then that there is a constant battle between the heart and mind. Both of them have a desire. Does everybody get it? Your thoughts have a desire. Voices that speak to you have a desire. Your flesh has a desire. You live a life of desire. That's how we were created. In Genesis chapter 1. So there is a battle between desires, or what we call a battle between the heart and mind. What are they? The thoughts of desires and the heart of desire. Genesis chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our what? Image. That means character. According to our what? Likeness. That means desire. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image or character. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over it. Why? Because that's his character. Over the fish, over the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God created Adam in his image of character and his likeness of desire. Remember, the heart is the character of your spirit, your character is a reflection of your desire. You'll know a person by what they desire. And what they desire is what they choose. Genesis 6. Battle between the heart and mind. Or we can just say battle between desires. You know. <laughs> the desires of the heart and the desires of the mind. In verse 1, Genesis 6, 1. 
Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, which are angels, saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. So these were fallen angels that took on women. Amen. After, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And after, also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they produced offsprings, and they bore children to them. These were mighty men who were of old men of renown. Now, you got to understand something which is very powerful here because now we see that the light of man has been put out. It was put out. It was covered. The character's heart by wicked spirits of fallen angels that produced offsprings of terrestrial and celestial beings. They were creating a race of antichrist and Luciferian reverence and perverse servants of darkness. And it says here, there were giants in those days, and afterwards when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore offsprings, and the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every what? Intent. What is intent? Desire. Of the thoughts of his heart was what? Only evil when? Continually. So we know that at that period of time, in that transition of these offsprings, we know that they were evil. The light had been put out, covered. Now they were evil continuously. Their thoughts and their desires were constantly evil. They were lustful. They were the full fulfillment of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Full throttle. Amen? They were rebellious. Their hearts had become hardened. They were no longer submissive to the Lord. Did you ever hear a person saying, man, that person just ain't got no heart, you know? That's how it was. Every intent, desire of thoughts or the heart was evil continuously, not occasionally, continuously. It was a wicked time on this earth. Tremendous. Why? Because the light of God in man had been put out. In Romans 7, <clears throat> Thank God for Noah. Boy, do I feel sorry for him, man. Bad enough he had to put up with all those demons, but then all those animals. Sheesh. Who's going to clean up that mess, you know? <laughs> There's a lot of animals on that boat. <laughs> Talk about climate control, you know? <laughs> Romans 7, verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Now you got to understand that the law and the commandment is associated with the word. The law was nothing to do except for to expose evil. Sin. Sin is the presence of evil. Verse 14. For we know that... The law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand, and for what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. So we see then that there's a battle here, isn't there? 
There's a battle between the heart and the mind. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. And that is known as your fallen nature, your flesh. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is, to pr is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. <laughs> For the good that I will to do I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. That means he's not in control. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. Hello. But sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me and the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the what? Inward man, the heart, the new man, the spirit. But I see another law in my members which is known as the flesh, warned against the law of my thoughts, my minds. Remember, these are, now there's a battle within us between thoughts of the mind, which are desires, and the heart's desires. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind or with the thoughts, I myself serve the law of God. In other words, because I desire. And with the flesh, the law of sin. There's a difference. In this area, the number one most important thing is recognizing that your thoughts have a desire and your heart has a desire. In these desires, there's a battle between. There's an area until they are aligned with the will of God and the word of God the desires in your heart are going to battle against the desires of your mind, and the desires of your mind and your thoughts are going to battle against the desires of your heart. And which one, whatever one you yield to is the one that you will produce the character of. Again, the law is exposing the presence of evil, which is sin. But the word and the law are one. I'm going to say it again. The word and the law are one. Inward man is the heart of the spirit of the new man, the, the spirit of creation. Members of the flesh warn against the desires of the heart by thoughts of influence. They're provoked. Again, the battle between the mind of the flesh and the heart of desire. Reality is the battle is over who is in control of your desires. And whatever you yield to is what you're going to become a servant to. Romans 12. Everyone senses the battle. You know it. You know your heart says one thing and your mind says another. Both of them are fighting for position for desire. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable servant or your responsibility. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your thoughts or your... Why? Because you're going to renew your thoughts of desire. Everybody got it? Thoughts of desire. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Transformed by renewing your thoughts of desire. How? Because you're going to align it with the word of God. Always discerning. Remember, everything's about a, a comparison. See, there are, there's always two in front of you. One's God, one's not. It's that simple. Hebrews 4. Now, 
That's why the world, again, uh, uh, the ruler of the world is Satan. He's controls by deception. Amen. It's his greatest weapon. He, he controls by fear. What does the word say? God's not giving us a what? Spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a what? Sound mind. A sound mind is holding the desires of God. That's why it, we talk about instability. Because a person that's not consistent and unstable is losing the battle between the desires of the heart and the desires of the thoughts, the mind. Hebrew 4. In verse 12. Hebrew 4, 12. Everybody there? Speak it. For the word of God is living. Everyone say living. And what? Powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the discerner of the thoughts and the desire so he's the the desires of thoughts and the intents or the desires of the heart it discerns both it knows both and what's it trying to do penetrate both to align him with the will of god and it says that there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Wow. Trans so we get tr transforming. We're being transformed. We're going through regeneration by the Holy Spirit. And, and by when we speak the word, we eat it. Amen. Again, uh, it is important that we begin to discern the incoming influence and what is promoting, promoting or provoking. A desire. David was known to be a man after God's heart. How many mistakes did he make? Plenty. Many, many mistakes. Because of the bail between the heart and mind. Amen? But the Word of God creates a desire to follow God. Ephesians 4. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 17. Is everybody okay? So the more you get in God's presence, the more power you have. Remember, he says, I'll give you my spirit and cause you. So we must constantly feed our spirit to cooperate. Remember, you have the power to choose. God will not choose for you. You must choose. In verse 17, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their thoughts, wrong desires. Having their understanding what? Darkened. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart or hardness of their heart. Who being past feeling. Hello, that connects right to it, right? Isn't a feeling a desire? Amen. Having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. He says, but you've not so learned Christ if you're allowing these things to happen. Indeed, you have heard from him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off concerning your formal conduct. Your formal conduct, does it have desires? Yes, does it have worldly desires? Amen. Not godly desires. The old man which grows corrupt according to the what? Deceitful lust or deceitful what? Desires. Isn't lust a desire? Yeah. And being renewed in the spirit of your thoughts or your mind. 
that you put on the what? New man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. No, don't give place to the devil to provoke or promote a desire that is displeasing to God. Amen? Uh, Hebrews 3. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why we must begin to recognize this. Where's my desire coming from? You know, think about this. What was the, what was the major fall in the garden? It was promoted by a desire. Didn't the serpent lie to Eve? Multiple times. But he was trying to create a desire in her. So that she would lose her identity. Remember, the first thing the devil tries to do is steal your identity. If he can exchange an a ungodly desire for a godly one, or, or a godly desire for an ungodly one, he begins to compromise your identity immediately. What are we doing? We're giving him access. It says, make no place for the devil. That's why the, the enemy, I mean, that's why they, they give out, I mean, every commercial you see, there's medication. Here, take this to sleep, take this to go awake, take this to play sports, take this, this, take this, take this, take this. If you got an ailment, take this. If you think you might have one, take this just in case. I mean, they're just trying to dumb us down. Why? Because they're trying to, these medications create a desire to do what? Nothing. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrew 4, or 3, sorry, seven, and verse 7. Is everybody there? That's why you ever ask someone that's medicated, what are you going to do? I don't know. They never know nothing. What's the matter? I don't know. Take another pill. I better take two more pills. Maybe I'll know. Then they sleep the rest of the day. I must have pain. But I don't know if I have pain. But just in case I have pain, I'll take another pill. I mean, it's just plumb crazy. Hallelujah. Verse 7, let's speak it. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not what? Harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in a day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you a evil heart of what? Unbelief. That's a desire, isn't it? An evil heart's a wrong desires. Departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you have a rebellious or hardened heart through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if what? If we hold on to the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Now how are you going to hold on to the beginning of your confidence? Why? You must have the godly desires. They must be active all the time. You cannot let a godly desire be dormant. Because when you allow a godly desire to become dormant, an ungodly desire will take its place. It says, while it is said, today you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. What is rebellion? 
It's a promotion of what? Ungodly desires. It rejects, ungod uh, it rejects godly desires. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But those who what? Did not obey. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Well, they had hardened hearts. It promotes sinful desires. Again, when people, you know, think about how people get dulled. I mean, they, uh, again, we talk about commercials and everything, and they have bars and, you know, liquor, uh, everything that they promote. You know, it's a pretty amazing today because I was watching some of this uh, stuff about the impeachment of Trump. And one of the things this professor said last night is you can't, you can't impeach a president for sin. If he sins, it's not a, it's not a lawbreaker. Talk about, <laughs> I thought, man, they just promoted an ungodly desire. In other words, they didn't, they didn't, uh, Clinton di didn't get, uh, Thrown, impeached, thrown out because he was uh, having sex in his Oval Office and cheating on his wife. He got thrown out because he got caught in a lie. He could have just told the truth. I'm a sinner. They just said four more years. Go ahead, sin some more. We don't care. But don't, don't break the law. They didn't. I mean. Again, this is what we're in. This is, how, this is how life is. This is the realm that we live in. It's okay to break the eternal law, but it's not okay to break the physical law. Amen? You get punished for breaking the physical law here, but you don't get punished for breaking the eternal spiritual law. Amen? God takes care of that. But see, they don't get that. They think they're getting away with it all. Uh -uh. Ain't happening. First Timothy chapter 4. Why? Because they cannot discern the desires, discern the desires of the heart and the desires of the thoughts. They're allowing every thought to take control over their heart. Now their heart has become hardened. Why? Because it rejects godly desires. Now they're living out of the mind and not out of the heart. That's where God is raising up what? Headless soldiers. He doesn't want us living out of the head. What's the head? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. That's full of it. What's it do? It creates desires of ungodliness. Hallelujah. First Timothy 4, is everybody there? And verse 1, I believe. Hallelujah. First Timothy 4. Yeah, verse 1. Now the Spirit what? Expressly says. Now when the word says expressly, it's mean like, yo! That's expressly. Do I have your attention? <laughs> he says that in a later time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared, hardened, severed with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Wow. For every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by what? The word of God and prayer. Seared conscience is a hardened heart. By what? The voices of these deceiving spirits in written words of demons. That's what a doctrine of demon is. It is the written words of demons. Amen? They create thoughts in the minds to provoke a desire in the heart of ungodliness. If the heart is pure, 
or will we begin to resist these thoughts? I can only express to you that after my visitation from the Lord, getting filled with the Spirit of God, I did not know the Word of God. Amen? But anything that came up close to me, my spirit, my heart, my spirit in me rose up and said, no. I didn't understand it all, but I knew it wasn't right. I just knew it wasn't right. I couldn't explain why it wasn't right. I didn't know what righteousness was. But now there was a, a righteousness within me because of God's presence. Now I desire to live a righteous life. I didn't even know what a righteous life was. Like I said, I didn't know what righteousness was. But I began to realize that there was something different. There was things that I was no longer approving of and things I was approving of. But until the Word of God, and that's when the Lord began to mentor me and teaching me the Word of God, because I didn't want to read the Word of God. I said, man, you can just tell me what to do. I'll do it. And that went on for a little while. We had a little struggle there. He kept bringing me to Word. I said, no. Why? Because I saw too many hypocrites with a Bible underneath their arm. I didn't want to be like them. Quoting a scripture and then go out and lying and cheating and doing the same old thing. I didn't want to be that way. I, I wanted to know him. And I was willing to say, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. And he did for a while, but then eventually he, he kind of like got silent for a minute and said, come on, you got to learn this. I didn't know I was going to teach it. But he had another plan. Hallelujah. Yes, glorious. Where are we at? Where you be? Did we finish this? We're done with that. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. <clears throat> you know, you, when you, uh, in the world they talk about an open mind. You know, man, just can, can you open your mind? You know, when we talk about an open heart, open your heart to the things of God. You know, because people close out. You know, what the enemy does in, in the world, B.C., causes us to build so many walls. Amen. That we don't even let God in. So, and, and of course, you hear all kinds of sayings, well, the church this, the church that, whatever, hurt me here, hurt me there. Did, you know, so what? It's your relationship with the Lord. I mean, if you truly have a relationship with the Lord, you don't care. You know, you want to get in God's presence, and you want to live a life that pleases him, because that's his desire for you, that you live a life that pleases him. Amen? We're not supposed to have any other desire in that area. That should be priority. That's where he calls greed and love of money. You know, so many times I, I speak with people and they're, everything to them is busy. They have a desire to be busy. You know, when you're so busy, you can't hear God. Amen? Busy, 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 busy. I, I, there's an area where we're in the spirit of busy because we're warfaring and praying and so forth. But the physical loves to get you busy so you can't hear God. And then next thing you know, there's an exchange of desire. And now you're beginning to touch and agree with a desire you know ain't right. And you're struggling. Why? Because you know the heart saying, don't do it. And the mind's trying to compromise and convince because of the voice of the stranger. Amen? That's sometimes the worst torment. Is to know but not able to. Amen? That's the terrible thing about addiction. Man, you know, but you're not able to. And then the enemy tries to convince you that you can do it on your own. And then he abuses you even more and more and more. And until we surrender to say, whatever you want, Lord, then he rescues us. Amen? 
Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That means in your spirit, your inner man. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might and not your own. And do what? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the what? The influence of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In other words, the unseen realm that's influencing you. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your what? So he's t telling us, these are your weapons, truth. Amen? Having put on a breastplate of what? Righteousness. You're not going to produce righteousness if you haven't got a pure heart. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which is the message of Christ. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which is which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit or in tongues, which is a weapon, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Does everybody see that? Truth, desires. These are all areas that you and I are to desire. Truth. We're to desire righteousness. What does the word say? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. And all things will be added. So these are areas that you and I have to have a desire. That should be in your heart and aligned with your mind. Your thoughts. So you are able to reject the thoughts that won't promote those things. Amen? You're going to reject fear. You're going to reject lust. You're going to reject desires that you know are harmful to you. Now, there are areas to where we're going to reject certain things that are not only harmful to us, but can sway us. So there may be things that may not be harmful to you at that time but could lead to a harmful position. Amen? So that's where you and I have to see things through. What's the end result of this? Does everybody get this? What is the end result of this decision I'm going to make? Because every decision is made by a what? A desire. What's a desire? What is this decision? Is it it's God's time, not God's time? What's the end result of this decision I'm going to make? And is it coming out of the mind or is it coming out of the heart? Where is it coming from? And that's what you and that's our responsibility should be. Who told me that and where'd you come from? Amen. Where did that desire come from? If we're not exposing our desires. We're going to be in trouble. Always. Hallelujah. Everything must align with the mind and the character of Christ. Everything. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers. In other words, don't fear because of evildoers. Don't freak out because of evildoers. Amen. Nor be envious. In other words, desire of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. He will give you the what? 
desires of your heart. See, because if you delight in him, he's going, you're going to take his desires anyways. So he's not going to give you a desire of your heart that's not of him. That's what people fight for. So you don't have to fight for something that's a godly desire when it's of God because he brings it. You fight for the things, people fight for the things that are not from God of that desire at that time. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. What does he say? Verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall what? Bring it to pass. So if you know, if you're delighting yourself in him, he's going to give you the desire. To what? Please him. Know his time. What's what? He said, and you're going to be able to trust him because eventually he's going to bring it to pass. It says, rest in the Lord. Wait a minute. He shall bring your forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the what? Noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait what? Patiently. That's called endurance. Endurance is an area that is a desire that pleases God. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Don't be jealous. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and don't fret. It only causes what? It causes harm. Delight is a desire to fall in love with God. He is your creator. It's an area where you are maintaining an attitude of gratefulness. He will establish your desires and he'll bring them to pass. Amen. We'll close at Psalm 24. The battle between the heart and the mind. It's constant. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. How are you going to have clean hands? With a pure heart. Amen. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol or his desire to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord, the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Help us to discern the desires of our minds and our thoughts and our hearts, knowing that there is a battle between them so that we align our desires with your word, expressing the character of Christ in everything we do. We desire your love, Lord, as you desire ours. We promise to give you the glory in everything happening here tonight. So please, touch each and every one, turn their hearts, invade our minds and thoughts, and give us a thirst and hunger for more of you and less of us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.